that gets us to the last, I think, big topic, you know, to talk about, which is really the role of immunotherapy. And, you know, we've seen it now in melanoma, in non-small cell lung cancer, renal cell cancer, or bladder cancer, or other cancers, and now we're beginning to apply it to triple negative breast cancer. And any comments, Hope? I mean, you presented data. Uh, well, you know, we, we know the triple negative data. It's so interesting because I was just talking to a patient yesterday about the keynote phase two trial that's ongoing in sort of unselected triple negative breast cancer after first line. And I told her the response rate in the phase one trial. And she was like, really? <laughs> you know, this is a woman who's progressing on adjuvant therapy. So it's not as if we have something that's better. But, you know, it's the both trials, the uh, pembrolizumab, which is a PD-1 inhibitor, and the atezolizumab trial, which is a PD-L1 inhibitor, uh, they looked at about 25 patients in a phase one dose expansion trial and showed almost identical uh, rates of response and their overall response rate, which was their primary endpoint of about 18 and half percent. And all of those patients had to express PDL1. The uh, atezolizumab trial uh, had a more strict definition, uh, so you had to be more positive by IHC, but the uh, pembrolizumab trial was just greater than 1%. I mean, you just had to have 1% or more, actually, I think, even 1% qualified. And the rates were surprisingly identical. Uh, we saw at San Antonio another trial uh, with uh, called the Javelin trial with avolumab, another uh, PD-L1 inhibitor where they treated all patients, and they saw actually a much lower response rate. And so, you know, we don't really know. They, they had screened about, uh, treated about 150 people, and their response rate, for example, in ER positive disease was 3%, and it was low in triple negative disease. So it may be that all of these agents are not the same, and maybe that, uh, and I think we all think that's quite likely. They found tons of people with PD-L1 expression, but they used a different antibody, so we have no standardization. So now there's an inter National Committee working on standardization of uh, antibodies used to uh, to test PDL1 like HER2. So then in ER positive disease, you know the the idea was okay. Now we have all these trials in triple negative breast cancer. There's a, everybody who makes one of these agents, the immune checkpoint inhibitors, is testing them in triple negative breast cancer. What about ER positive disease? There's preclinical data that the more luminal B-like, more proliferative ER positive breast cancer uh, does have a greater infiltration of t uh, uh, lymphocytes and uh, has increased expression of PDL1. Uh, so in the, there was another keynote trial, they call them all keynote trials, where they had like, you know, 24 different cancers that we treated in a phase 1B trial. And all of the cancers have shown some response rate, variably, uh, that have been reported so far. So there have been six different diseases reported, and we just reported at San Antonio the ER positive group. Uh, and it's interesting, there's a lower rate of positivity, so lower rate of expression of pd one but there was a real response rate of about 13%, 13.5%. Uh, and some of those responses were quite durable. We didn't see the, uh, in the triple negative group, the time to response, median time to response is 18 weeks. In the ER positive group, it was sooner, but people went off very quickly. I think they, you know, people didn't really buy into that pseudo progression, uh, so <coughs> people went off faster. So, you know, now there's like an explosion of trials testing these agents and combining them with all sorts of different drugs that sort of upregulate the immune response so that if you could take away the blockade, then you could upregulate the immune response, maybe it would work even better. Right, it's basically doing 30 years of trials, again, with checkpoint inhibitors. Right. The issue I have with breast cancer, though, just in general, when you think about it, I mean, one of the theories right now is that the reason melanoma and renal cell cancer are so responsive is that they have a lot of neoantigen diversity, and breast cancer and prostate cancer don't. And so, in fact, people have shown, you know, the more neoantigen diversity you have in the tumor, the more response you'll have. And, Again, with breast, it kind of gets me a little skeptical. Right, but there is the other strategy, at least in the triple negative, we don't know if it'll work, is to try to expose the BRCA Correct. Ness. Expose right. good the point. And that's of a the good point. See what happens. Been, These are you know, the sort of things that are going to happen. Epigenetically modified right. or some Using other mechanism. Using histone deacetylation. Listen, I think that's a great or, idea. Yeah. These are all and there's a whole ideas. bunch of agents that are being looked right. at that yes. can do that actually. So that's great. that could that could that help. Could work. You know? so I think no, we're I think in an really, exploratory phase. We are, but it's really interesting. I mean, you know, hopefully we'll have that sort of you know thing happen. But the immune picture is in the other direction is the issue of tills. And this, uh, you know, yes. tumor uh, infiltrating lymphocytes right. and their huge impact on prognosis. And I um, hope I'd love to hear you what your thoughts are about it. It is fascinating. I think the whole idea that if you don't block the immune response, so and maybe that's expressed by tills, 
that you, these tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, that maybe that makes a big difference, particularly in the more aggressive phenotypes of breast cancer where TILs have correlated with better outcome in patients, as you pointed out. And Shireen Loy, who's now uh, back in Melbourne in Australia, uh, has done a lot of work on this in a number of different trials, very elegant work. I think the compli complexities of this is whether the TILs are in the stroma or in the right. tumor or where they are, but it does seem like no matter where the TILs are, it does make a difference in prognosis. If you have them, maybe they're indicative have, of an immune, active immune but, response. And the, that's one of the things like macrophage inhibitors, maybe you could enhance the TIL population, but you know you have to not cause too much toxicity with on-target toxicity. Right. So this is a fascinating area of exploration. There's a whole TIL group, along with the pdl one group, who are interested in trying to um, standardize the way we uh, measure TILs and, and report them so that maybe you could use it to determine prognosis. Maybe we'll be using RCB plus TILs in order to decide who should get postneoadjuvant therapy. And I don't that's know. for the future. But again, great.